So first thing to do is centre punch all the holes you're going to drill. Um, you can drill them without, but um, I much prefer to centre punch all my holes. Uh, that way I can line up the parts and uh, make sure they all fit before I go drilling a hole. Because unfortunately you only get one shot at this. So now with my ears ringing from that, um, I'm going to drill these, I think, although these are 4mm, I'm going to drill them at 5 so I've got a little bit of wiggle room to, uh, to fit the piece. Um, these, I think I'll, I'll drill a nice big hole, maybe 8mm or something, and then try and cut around with a jigsaw. They're quite nice straight um, holes or straight lines to cut, so I should be able to do pretty well with that. Uh, this one, I'm not sure yet, I think I'll probably try and find the centre and then go at that with a hole saw. In fact, actually, let's find the centre now. So, it's a fairly square. Fairly square, so you can, yeah, if you, if you send, line it up with the punch marks. It doesn't have to be massively accurate, it, as long as it's, the hole is roughly in the centre, that should be enough, so there we go. So, little cross, punch the centre, and I'll, I'll try and get a centre drill on it, um, a centre drill, uh, try and get a hole, hole saw on that. Um, I think, this is quite mild steel, so I think a hole saw will probably go through it, even if it's a wooden one. Right, so I've not tried this camera setup before. Uh, I have the camera now sellotaped to the drill press, so hopefully you can see the points where I'm about to drill um, and be able to see each each hole as it's made. I've set the I've set the drill press up with a five mil bit um, which should be fine for all the holes and I'll centre drill that as well. Right, well now I've got a drill bit that's straight, instead of bent as a dog's hind leg, let's start. Right, so that's all the main holes drilled. Now I'll just quickly deburr them before I hurt myself. And then 
we will get on and drill the power hole. Well I've just discovered that duct tape is no good for holding cameras onto your pillar drill. Um, but uh, the camera seems to have survived so I'm happy. But now we've got all the holes all deburred. I just quickly run around a, with a countersink and a hand drill for, to do that. So I've just quickly fitted a, an 8mm drill bit in there because um, I need a starting hole in here if I'm going to jigsaw this out. <laughs> So I've slowed the uh, drill press down from about 1000 RPM to more like 220 I think it was. Um, 1000 RPM on a drill bit this, this big would be incredibly fast, likely to take your head off before you, uh, as soon as you touch the metal. Now you've got to, with a hole saw like this, definitely need a backing board definitely need to thoroughly clamp everything down because you really really don't want the workpiece getting away from you. The uh, a hole saw tends to catch quite a lot, even drilling wood um, you'll find that it will catch and spin the wood and you would be amazed how much power there is in a drill. Um, even a little hand drill uh, practically pull your arm off, um, let alone something like this which uh, this sort of RPM the torque would be amazing. Um, there's no way you could control the workpiece. It, I would be, I'm actually quite concerned even with clamps in this that if it catches it could drag the workpiece out. Um, so to help that, um, as the drill rotates that way, I'm going to clamp the piece like this so that should it catch, this will fly around and hit there rather than hit me. Because the last thing I want to do is be wearing this. Right, well there you go, I'm clamped up, um, two nice big clamps, I'm pretty sure that's going to hold now, um, as long as it, if it does catch, I'm going to be going slowly so it shouldn't be a big catch, um, <coughs> get a little bit of oil on there just to help take away a little bit of the cutting heat, because this could get really quite hot, it's, um, it's a bi bi-metal hole saw, so yeah, I think it should be okay, um, well here we go. That's unfortunate, it seems to have managed to take my chuck off. So <laughs> I'll just pause that and uh, get the chuck back on. Right, this is the last go, and then if this doesn't work, I'll do something else. Well I finished the hole as best I could, um, I don't know there's either something wrong with the chuck or something wrong with the arbor, because um, the amount of vibration I was getting shouldn't, shouldn't have been enough to cause the chuck to come off, um, but it's yeah, I mean, paper thin, um, so a quick run around with a file, and I'll have a nice hole.
Right, offer this up. Looking good. Holes a little bit bigger than I wanted, but no, that's fine. And uh, we've got a pad to go around there as well, somewhere. Somewhere in there. Oh, there you go. Yep, perfect. There you go. Right, now I'll tackle this one. Um, I'm going to attack it with a jigsaw first. I think that should, <coughs> should probably work. Just cut around carefully, uh, back up a bit where needed. It's, um, definitely a pair of ear defenders for this because this is going to be a noisy job. So that's the first hole butchered.
So as my camera's fallen on the floor for the second time tonight, I think it's about time I gave up trying to film. Um, I've got the second hole cut over here um, and I've quickly run around it with a file just to make sure there's no burrs. Um, I'll show you what happened when the camera fell on the floor. So, uh, And here's what, if you think screen protectors don't work, check out this one. See that gouge and that hole there? Well, that has caused by this falling on the screen. I was using it as a cradle for the camera and the corner has done that and yet the screen is absolutely perfect. So uh, screen protectors definitely work so, um, and I feel very very lucky. Anyway here's a close up, there's the one hole there are the other two. I think off camera now I'll just check that the uh, fans fit and then I'll call it a night because I've had enough bad luck for one night.